to Let's Get Cooking with Tina, week four. So I hope you've all been watching the videos and you're all enjoying what you're making. So today's recipe is going to be meatballs in gravy. And I know a person that really likes gravy. So I hope she's going to be watching this and she does do it. So what we're going to talk about now is, is we know how to wash our hands. I've took my rings off. I've got no nail varnish on. But what else do we need to think about? So what about my clothes? What about my hair and my shoes? So I'm gonna leave that with you while I get things ready and I want you to think about how we dress in the kitchen. Back in a minute. So, I hope you thought about what you have to wear in the kitchen. So as you can see, I've got my pinny on to hide, to hide my clothes so I don't get my clothes stained. I've got my hair up. And what sort of shoes have I got on? Flat shoes. Yes, we do not want high heels in the kitchen. So can you comment underneath when we do this video why I want to wear high heel shoes? And why wouldn't I wear flip flops in the kitchen? Very, very dangerous. So let's get on with our meal. So we are doing meatballs in gravy. So my first ingredient will be the mince. And can you remember what chopping board we use? So I've got my mince in here. So I've already took it out of the packet. And I know I have weighed this. Oh, wait a minute, let me just take that out. We need to make sure. Let's put it on to zero. And I have washed my hands, so we need 500 grams of beef. It does say 250 of beef and 250 of pork. However, when I went shopping, there was no pork, so I'm just going to use beef. So I'm just going to take this away. I'm just going to wash my hands because we're in touching raw meat, so it's very important that we wash our hands. So our next ingredient is bread. I have cut the crusts off, but can you remember what board we use for bread? I'll go and get it. Yes, it's the white board. So we're going to make our bread crumbs. So I've got some, just got a loaf of bread, I've cut the crusts off. So all I'm going to do is break up the bread into little pieces to make some bread crumbs. You can buy bread crumbs in a pack, but I thought I would do it myself probably much more healthier and it shows you the cooking skills and the techniques that we'll be using for those that did the cooking and they're not here anymore I don't want you to lose what you've been doing because when we get back we need to know don't we homemade always tastes best okay so we're going to put that there so we've got our meat and we've got our breadcrumbs so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the onions up. So can you remember what board we use to cut an onion? Hope you all remembered. Yes, it's the brown board. So this onion is going to go in with our meat to form our meat, uh, meatballs. So I need to chop this really fine. So I'm just going to take off the end. Take all this skin off. There we go. So we're going to use the bridge method. I hope you can all remember. So we're going to cut down, just take that to the side, and then we're going to use the claw method. So it's keeping your fingers safely out of the way, and we're just going to slice down the, the onion, holding it again, keeping those fingers out of the way, slicing it. And this one's not making my eyes water today which is a problem when we're in the kitchen, isn't it, everybody? We all do moan. We don't like the job of cutting an onion, do we? We try and pass it on. So let's cut it down. Keeping your fingers out of the way. Laying it down as flat as you can. 
So it does make it easier when you're cutting it. carefully I'm going to chop these onions into tiny small pieces what I'm going to do I'm going to have the knife so I'm going to keep my hand on the top because we don't want don't want your hand underneath because you can chop your chop your fingers off so what we're going to do we're just going to gently press the knife down and this will chop our onions into nice small pieces so just be very careful when using a knife I know that my cooking crew have got good knife skills. And I know that they all know not to put knives into a sink or into a bowl. Because what will happen? Someone else might come in, put their hands in the bowl and cut their hands on the knife. It won't be very good, would it? Right, I want these as thin as I can because these are going to go in our meatballs. making my eyes water this time which is good and I won't be crying on the um, on the video and you don't want to see that do you there we go that's it so we can get these in a bowl waste. Back in a minute. So what do we need to do then? So we've got our mince, we've got our breadcrumbs, we've got our onions, we've got our salt and pepper and our garlic and our mixed herbs. So what we have to do, we have to put all this together. So before I start, I'm just going to take the lid off these my hands will have some meat on them so I'm just going to take my clean hands but as you can see so I'm going to break up this meat so some nice nice small bits don't know if you can see that so I'm going to take our onion pop that in with the meat that's why it's very important to keep washing your hands in the kitchen because sometimes you do need your hands to fold food. So we know, don't we, if we cough, sneeze, touch our, touch our nose, touch our hair, touch the floor, go to the bin, we must always wash our hands. Good practice, that is. So the next is... The breadcrumbs. So mix. Right. So I've just got to go and wash my hands again because I've got to hold that salt and pepper pot and I've got raw meat on my hands. Do we know what we call that? If I get raw meat on there, we call it cross contamination make it very poorly if you may get some raw meat and eat it. There we go. So we need black pepper. So you can do black pepper to your taste. It's coming out very well so I'm just going to give it 
got salt, like a pinch of salt. Okay, remember what we don't do, we don't pour that straight into there, because if this lid comes off, the whole lot goes in. So we use our hand, and it will say, pinch or two pinches of salt. There we go. Right, we need a teaspoon of garlic. Teaspoon of mixed herbs. There we go, put all that in. So then what I've got to do again, I've got to take my hands and I'm going to mix it all in. So this recipe says this makes 20 meatballs. So these meatballs won't be very big and it depends on who you're feeding. So because it's me and Matt going to be eating these for dinner, I'm going to do them a bit bigger. Do you want some, Matt? Yeah. Matt wants good. some. You don't know, even Vicky and Ron might try some. Can be our testers. Okay, that's that. Right, don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try and show you. So, can you see all this mix? All this mix together, look, so it's got all in there. There we go, right, I'm just gonna wash my hands again. So I'm gonna bring the red board back. We're going to take this meat and we're going to form it into some into meatball. I think that would be big enough for one person. Because it's quite a soft texture, look, it goes into a meatball. So there's one. Sure, we use a bit to waste none, do we? So, how many have we got? We've got two, four, six, eight. So, we are going to switch the oven on. So, I hope you can all remember main switch first. Then, we're going to put our cooker one on our fuse box and our fan. So what do we do? And we get in the corner like we always do. So what do we listen for? Can we hear that? Can you hear that fan? Let's listen. Is it getting faster? What do we say? Is it that rocket taking off? Right, so we come over and we switch on the silver button which puts our cooker on. I hope you've all remembered that while we're done. So what we're going to do with our meatballs, we're going to fry them lightly in here. So we need two teaspoons of oil. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in. You might find, you know, might need a little bit more, all depends. So let's switch it on. Can you remember which one we need to switch it on? So for this back one, to make sure the handle's out of the way, it's this one. So we hold it in. Turn it, just keep it there for a few seconds. There we go. Right, so what we're going to do first, we're going to heat the oil before we put the meatballs in. So just let that heat up just for a little minute. Right, so this is nice and hot. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want to burn my meatballs. Take it over, let's just be careful when we put them in. Might have to actually, do you know what? I might have to use my hands. That's it. Ooh, can you hear them sizzling? This oil is nice and hot. There we go. to cook these for about six to eight minutes. So let's come over here. Is that on? Yeah. 
There we go. So I've done it for six. We need to just cook them for a little bit longer. It really doesn't matter. So it's all trial and error and what you think about your food. So what it tells you to do is to move them around a little bit because we don't want, see underneath, it's going to get brown more than the top. So we're just going to move them around a little bit. I might change these a bit better actually. So we'll just wait for them to get going. Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to make the gravy. So what we have to do is, according to the recipe, we're going to take the meatballs and we're going to pop them into this pan. So I'm going to use the same, the same um, frying pan. There's no point in getting two out, is there? And all the flavour will be in there as well, so that will be good. So I'm going to transfer. These aren't, um, these aren't hot, by the way. They have cooled down a bit, so I'm not going to burn my fingers. So don't worry about that. This heat up a little bit and we're going to cook our onions. Get it all, we don't want to waste none, do we? We'll mix this, this meat that we've got left as well, we'll mix it all in. While that is just browning off, we'll make our stock ready. So we need 300 ml. Our face, do we? So we've got 300. So let's bring it over here. We're going to add our stock cube. So while them onions are sitting away, we're going to mix this stock cube into our water and this is the stock that we'll be using well part of the stock anyway it smells good we're only halfway there sizzling. 
This makes a lovely gravy, really nice flavour. Some of it, some of the wine will be, be cooked off as well. sizzling oh you wait till you do this recipe and smell this nice these nice flavors it's lovely let's have a look here's the stock it's nearly dissolved there's a little bit there look but no worries we'll pour it in Any. Pour it in, that's it. Right, again, this is glass, so let's put this over here out of the way. So let's mix it round. Mix it all in together. You smell that, Matt? It smells lovely, doesn't it? It does. Matt can't wait to have a try. Vicky's waiting to have a try as well. Just is she? We've got Vicky. Oh, is she being nosy? Right, so then we need our, oh, can't get that out very well, never mind, I knew that, look, that's it. So we're going to mix it all together, and then what we do with this, we transfer this to the pan over there with the meatballs in, and we cook it and simmer it. I think it's about 20 minutes, right, I think that's all mixed in nicely. So I'm going to get our meatballs. to gently pour the gravy. Oh, wait a minute, let me just switch off this. I'm not going to use it, but you never know. So I'm going to pour it slowly into the pan. See, all, them, all that bit of meat that was stuck in there is all nicely in the pan now. So that'll be um, cooking in there as well. So can we see? So we've got our gravy in there, we've got our meatballs. So I'm going to switch it on again. And it says, with the lid on top of the pan, leave that for 30 minutes. However, we will check it. We won't leave it for 30 minutes because it, it could, um, it, the water could just waste away the gravy. So we need to keep checking it. Might even have to add a little bit more, but we will see. So it's been 30 minutes. So I'm going to see what our meatballs look like. I have in between, I have been checking them to make sure they, um, they don't go dry. And also I have added more gravy because I like thick gravy. And I know there's certain people in this group, when we do cooking, likes gravy. I wonder who it is. Oh, right, okay then. Let me get a little spoon, put that there in there. So we've got a couple of chief tasters today. So we've got Romani and we've got Vicky. So I'm going to get them a, a meatball out with gravy. Is that one? So what else do you think you would eat with your with your meatball? I would say mashed potatoes or even boiled potatoes with skins on for Rhea and maybe a veg, green beans, broccoli, something like that. That would be very nice and then this would be a nice healthy meal. So like I said, we've got the lovely Romani and we've got the lovely Vicky that's going to be my samplers. And Romani has opted for a little bit of cheese on hers and Vicky is just going to have hers with a gravy. So, there you go, bon appetit.
Oh wow. Mm. Yeah, all good? Yeah? Yes. So another great success. Thumbs up. See you next time.